You can check out Peter King's NFL column. It is must read every Monday. Football morning in America every Monday exclusively at NBCSports.com. Pete got back from the combine yesterday and he joins us now. Biggest topic, Pete, that you come back with that you're excited about? Well, it's like what Gil Brandt told me. Uh, you know, he's been going to the Combine for 9,000 years since the Pleistocene age. And uh, <laughs> he said that uh, he doesn't remember any player creating the kind of buzz, attention, uh, must see uh, more than Kyler Murray. And, uh, hmm. you know, Murray is – Murray, uh, Dan, I, 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 I'm forbidden from telling you which coach this was. But I saw – a coach in Indianapolis jog after the Kyler Murray party uh, when he was getting ready to leave town just because Mm -hmm. he wanted to meet him, say hello to him and say, Hey, you never know what might happen. And I saw him and he goes, I I beg you, you know, just do (laughs) me a solid and don't say that, that don't, don't say what you just saw, but, but that's really kind of what it was. And it isn't that, It isn't that guys are gee whiz. I'm a fan of this guy. It's like, uh, I want to be in business with this guy at some point. And so that, that obviously was the most interesting, compelling thing. And, and again, look, it could be that all these defensive guys who are incredibly talented and have these, uh, these great workouts are going to be great NFL players. But uh, this, this guy from, uh, from Mississippi state, you know, Sweat, who ran the ran faster than Odell Beckham at the scouting combine. Yeah. You know, as soon as I saw that, I called a couple of guys, and one of the uh, one of the guys who I called in the NFL, uh, longtime uh, NFL scout uh, and higher than that, said to me, "Yeah, I saw him a lot this year because we're interested in, in a pass rusher in the draft, so I, I've scouted him a lot." And he goes, "He's one of those guys." He makes an incredible play once. You say, oh, my God, he's unstoppable. And then uh, he'll disappear for a while. And so even though I do believe that he's going to get, he might even be a first-round pick, that's the problem with so many of these things at the Combine that get people so excited. You remember a couple of years ago when this receiver from Washington, John Ross, yeah. ran a four-two-two. Well, the headline last week is Bengals have John Ross on the block. You know, they drafted him, whatever it was, ninth overall, and now they're trying to dump him. So just you just have to be careful about what you see this time of year. And I found it really ironic that all the talk in Indianapolis from whatever there were, 337 players there, all the talk was about the one guy who did nothing there. But if you're Arizona, how can you? I'd take him. Okay. I'd take him. Okay. And then you worry about what happens with with Josh Rosen. And I quoted Kurt Warner in a a front office, a longtime, very well-respected general manager. I asked them both this weekend, what would you pay for Josh Rosen? What do you think his market value is? And they both said a third. So, but, but that can't matter in this. You know, a year ago, the Cardinals were at 15, and they moved up to 10 and gave a third and a fifth to Oakland to move up five spots. And then they took Josh Rosen. But I feel strongly that, you know, so the Bengals look dumb for doing what they're doing with John Ross. But if they've decided that he's not a player and he drops too many balls, get rid of him. If he's not helping you win, you know, you can't worry about the fact that you just used the ninth pick on the draft on him two years ago. I honestly think that, if they believe that, that they want Kyler Murray, they got to get what they can get for Rosen and just move on and take the hit that they're going to take. Yeah, I was wondering about the Raiders as still, and I thought the Raiders from the outset with Kyler Murray, and now everybody kind of realizes you got a special quarterback, you got a, you, a, got, you got a head coach who sort of broke the mold. You get fired from Texas Tech and you come in. So if he's coming in, I'm thinking out of the box from the beginning, and Josh Rosen doesn't fit, I believe, what Cliff Kingsbury wants to do, and you become relevant. Like Even if Josh Rosen is a better grade than Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray makes you relevant in the NFL, and you just don't yeah. want to be sort of in that pur- well, and, purgatory. And, you know, even though, even though Arizona has done a great job 
with attendance, you know, since they opened that stadium. They might have sold out every game. I don't know. You can feel the market starting to soften. You know, you see, you know, the Diamondbacks and the Coyotes and what happens when they perennially lose. Uh, You know, people don't come. So I believe that if the Cardinals have two or three more seasons like they just have, all of a sudden that sea of red becomes a a sea of red and gray with all the empty seats in gray or whatever the, the color they are. But, Dan, I'll just say one other thing, you know, about John Gruden. Now, look. Someone in Indianapolis told me John Gruden is the worst poker player in the NFL <laughs> because, you know, he and Mike Mayock, and I believe Mike Mayock might truly believe it, but he and Mike Mayock uh, can talk all they want about uh, about uh, how they love Derek Carr. And, indeed, they may love Derek Carr. But I'm telling you, John Gruden is very, very interested in Kyler Murray. Yeah. Very interested. So all I can say on that one is stay tuned. And I don't know if he's going to – be able to engineer anything to move up if he loves them that much. I think he does, but we'll see, time will tell. We'll see what happens. It may all be moot. If Arizona decides they're going to pick him and says we're not listening to anything, then maybe we'll maybe I'll look like a fool for saying John Gruden loved Kyler Murray because he, he'll never have had to act on it. If you know what I mean, yeah. he loves Kyler Murray, but but it, but he may not. He may be able to tell. Uh, he may be able to tell Derek Carr, "Don't believe what you read." Yeah, that was going to be the guest, the coach that ran after Kyler Murray's group. I know you can't mention any names, no. <laughs> but, but that was going to be that was going to be my guest. John Gruden's running up to say hello to Kyler Murray's party, but uh, you you don't have to answer yeah. anything. You don't have to answer anything. Uh, the Nick Foles uh, is signed, sealed, delivered here to Jacksonville. Foregone conclusion this week. You know, I don't I don't know Dan, but uh, I kept hearing in uh, in Indianapolis that that's the only team that really wants him. I don't think the Giants want him. I think Washington has some interest, but the problem mm. that that is, you know, when I was talking to people out there, the problem is you're not positive. You love Nick Foles in January, you know, you you, you love him in the postseason, but and you love him that one year in Philly, but man, he he's he's had some he's had some iffy days under center in the NFL. Now you can say, well, everybody does you know, under the St. Louis Rams in the dying days of Jeff Fisher. I get it. But I'm just not positive that there is the absolute consistent, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically the absolute consistent record of work that, that Nick Foles has that somebody says, I'm paying him, I'm making him this year's Kirk Cousins. I'm paying him 28 million a year. Now, I don't know what Jacksonville, I assume it's Jacksonville. It's what everybody says. It's what everybody in Indy thinks. So I don't know what they'll pay him, but I just, I think there's the reason that the market is not broiling hot when Miami needs a quarterback, when Washington needs a quarterback. Yeah, it's funny, Dan. I sense some significant interest out there in Teddy Bridgewater. And obviously, Teddy Bridgewater has nothing of the resume of Nick Foles. I mean, Nick Foles outdueled uh, the great Belichick, you know, just 13 months ago. So I, I mean, look, and, and I'll, and I'll just say this, a hats off to the Eagles for, for letting Foles go, but don't just think it's all an altruistic act because I think the Eagles didn't really believe they would get much more than a three. So by doing a good deed, yeah, and allowing Nick Foles his freedom to go choose whatever team he wants, even if it's a one-team field. Honestly, he's still going to get a three next year as, as a compensatory pick. So it's not it's not the ultimate act of selflessness by the Philadelphia Eagles. Final topic. I think this guy needs an intervention, Antonio Brown. It, it, is he talking himself know, into a job, or is he talking himself out of jobs? I Dan, I heard that, you know, Adam Schefter reported, I think he's absolutely right, Oakland, Washington, Tennessee. I heard yesterday morning before I left town that there was one other team. Now, so it sounds like Oak, It sounds like Pittsburgh is going to be able to make a deal as early as this week. That's what I wrote this morning, that they're confident that they can get not market value, but they can get more than a lot of people think they'd get. And I pegged it at, if I had to go to Vegas right now and you said, What's the over-under on the pick in the draft that Pittsburgh will get uh, for Antonio Brown? 
I would peg it at number 27, which ironically is the, <laughs> uh, the pick that Oakland uh, acquired for Amari Cooper. And in the long run, even though I think Oakland did a terrible job in trading Khalil Mack, um, if you were to ask me right now, who would you rather have for the next three years, uh, Amari Cooper, Antonio Brown, warts and all, I'd rather have Antonio Brown, even though, Dan, there's no question. I wrote this a couple of weeks ago that Antonio Brown has absolutely sullied his market value. If he had just shut up for the last nine weeks, said absolutely nothing, just disappeared, went into a monastery, <laughs> uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers would get a lot better uh, take uh, for Antonio Brown than this. Yeah, and he, I, I, he wants a new contract, and I know he says it's not about the money. But I don't think he can. I don't think he can get one right okay. away. I will be. I will be very surprised if he gets one right away because what I think you'd be foolish if I were a team that would mean that would make me not trade for him. I'd have to say to Drew Rosenhaus, "Hey, listen, we're not making this deal. It, we're not giving him a new contract in year one. After this year, we'll see. Let's see how it develops." But if I were a team, I'd rather trade one, have him play that first year, and if it's a disaster, just cut him. Let him become a free agent somewhere. Uh, then, then give him new money right now because that could turn out to be a disaster. Pete, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Great read this morning, the uh, Football Morning in America column every Monday on NBCSports.com. Thank you, Pete. Hey, really appreciate it, Dan. All the best to you. That's Peter King. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.